Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about why this upcoming hurricane season could be extremely active. For today's comment of the day, I want to know how many hurricanes do you think we're going to have this year total? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, first things first, I got to go over each region here of our Atlantic Ocean, just so that you can be you know, familiar with what we call each region individually. Obviously the East Coast up there, that's our East Coast region. That's that's pretty obvious. We see that OTS down there and you might not know what that means. That means out to sea. So if you ever hear me say out to sea, that means it's going there, out to sea. Uh, we see the Gulf of Mexico, another very obvious one there. The Caribbean is also very obvious there in the magenta shade there. And then we see our main development region or MDR for short. If you ever hear me say MDR, I'm talking about this red area right there, offshore of Africa mostly, and then all the way across the Atlantic, almost to the Caribbean. That's where most tropical cyclones begin. Uh, and, and oftentimes they either dissipate still within there if there's too much shear, too much dry air. And if they don't dissipate, they will begin to work their way all the way towards the Caribbean or the Gulf or the East Coast. Uh, and that's when they can begin to bring impacts to land, obviously. So we obviously always want to watch out for that. Uh, and that's oftentimes how we see this go. So let's just break down those sea surface temperature anomalies. Because obviously temperature anomalies are going to be the, one of the most important things, obviously, as we're looking towards the hurricane season. Uh, and as we break it down, you can see there is a bit of a weak La Nina there that's indicated by the blues offshore of Central America there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This is a La Nina that can either dissipate and become an El Nino or it could become uh, or stay a La Nina. It is hardly a La Nina at this point and there's no clear cut indications of what could happen next. It's more likely that it goes back towards a La Nina, uh, but there's also that likelihood that it stays in a neutral phase or an El Nino. Everything is possible at this point. Overall, the Atlantic is a little bit warmer, though, and that's going to encourage tropical development, obviously. We look for those warm sea surface temperatures where those hurricanes are going to track, and that does help with development. And that's one of the main reasons we saw such a huge hurricane season last year is the Atlantic was practically boiling, the entire Atlantic. Very, very hot Atlantic. We were talking about that all year last year in these videos. Uh, just how warm that Atlantic really, really was. So let's just take a zoomed in look there at the Atlantic actually. And as you can see, our MDR uh, is looking quite warm. There is some colder water up there to the more northern side of things, but there is just some patches of very warm water there. Uh, and I'm expecting it to kind of expand on that. We have seen in the past seven days that we've seen some warming in this region. And I expect that to continue. Uh, and, and this is just a little bit colder than last year was. We can see the Gulf is near neutral. Same story with the Western Caribbean there, uh, near Cuba, near the Bahamas. Uh, this could either go, this could really go either way. We really see ma minor areas like that. We do see change many times throughout the year. Uh, so we could see some massive changes by the time we're reaching August, September. That's why it's a little too early to say for certain uh, and our confidence is medium at best here. Now offshore of the East Coast, we do have some very warm waters. Again, that is another thing that could totally change uh, but if this was to stay the same once storms move offshore of the east coast they could begin to develop uh, we saw that early last season a lot of times as well now what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at what our el nino or la nina is going to do we're going to take a look at some other regions on a graph and then we're just going to compare this to previous years as well All right, so first things first, here is our Nino 3.4 index. Uh, and this is just a graph that shows us where our El Nino or La Nina is at. And as you can see, over the winter, we were at about negative one there on this graph. And that was a La Nina, totally a La Nina. And you can see we've been creeping closer and closer to that neutral uh, region to where now we're less than uh, negative 0.5 uh, degrees below that normal zero, zero line. Uh, so that means that we are pretty much out of a La Nina and we pretty much have been for about a month or two. I had a lot of people commenting like, what are you talking about? We're still in a La Nina. Uh, we're not in a La Nina currently based on sea surface temperatures at all. Uh, we would need to be below that uh, 0.5 line and we are not and we haven't been really for the past two months or so. Uh, but this could easily just go back negative. We're probably still feeling La Nina impacts because of that lag. Uh, but if, if this doesn't go back to a La Nina quickly, uh, we're going to start to feel more of a neutral ENSO pattern set in here. Uh, now for our Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperature anomalies, and I noticed this last year as well. Uh, I paid a very close attention to the hurricane season last year, more attention than I ever have in my entire life. So I learned a lot of things last year. 
Uh, and one of the things is here on this graph for the Gulf of Mexico, this is one of the ones that fluctuates the most out of any of them. As you can see, it is very sharp up and down uh, all over the place. So there's really no clear cut indication of if this will be negative or positive uh, at any given time. And really it could vary week to week on this chart. But the one thing I will say is that the mean average here is definitely positive as it's rarely gone negative. Uh, once they're around January 17th and then again uh, kind of in mid to late February there uh, once more. But really it's been mostly positive. Now the Caribbean, and this is another very important region, has been trending negative. We're going to watch this closely, but as you can see since January it's been kind of going down slowly. So this is an important thing to watch as well. And here's the total North Atlantic, and as you can see we're basically positive overall. And that's obvious. It's been this way for years. Uh, and it, it looks to stay this way. I would be very shocked if we ended up with a below normal sea surface temperature North Atlantic overall. Uh, that'd be very shocking to say the least. But the one thing that is going to change everything and it's going to dictate everything is what this Nino 3.4 index ends up doing. Is it going to go down from this point or is it going to go up into an El Nino phase? That could completely change the hurricane season. And honestly, if this goes to an El Nino, we could expect an average to below average hurricane season. If this stays at a neutral or goes towards a La Nina over the next few months, we could expect an above average hurricane season. So that is going to be just clear cut. You know, there's no way around that, really. Uh, that's going to be one of the strongest pieces of, you know, data that we could use in a hurricane season, really, in my opinion. Or really, that's just how it is. There is no my opinion about it. Uh, if there's a La Nina, we see less shear. If we see an El Nino, there is a ton of shear. Uh, and that would really break up these storms. So that is going to change the game for sure. And what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to compare our sea surface temperatures to previous years, 2019 and 2020. Uh, we're just going to see how this matches up, basically. And then we're going to take a little bit of a recap look at my hurricane season forecast we uploaded about a week and a half ago. Now, first off, here's 2019 on April 11th. And it's April 11th today. Uh, our most recent data that we've gotten is from April 9th, so we're going to be using that for the 2020 and 2021. Uh, but I used 20, I used a, a, uh, April 11th here for 2019. But really, it doesn't, you know, impact. It's not going to change that much over two days, so don't don't sweat it, really. Uh, but we had a very warm area for the Gulf and then north of the Caribbean. But you can see we had a cold MDR in 2019. We had a very cold MDR, as you can see. Now 2020, obviously, we had a historic hurricane season, one of, if not the worst hurricane seasons of all time, as we predicted last year. Uh, and it was very clear cut evidence. Just like I said, sometimes you just know based on the evidence that it's pretty much just going to be the case. And when you see an Atlantic ocean like this, where there's hardly any blues anywhere, uh, it's hard to say that it's not going to be just absolutely out of control, warm everywhere. Especially the Gulf there and especially offshore of the East Coast. But overall, I mean, one degree or more above average pretty much for 90% of the Atlantic here, or at least the tropical Atlantic. Because near Greenland, there's obviously those blues and greens, but that's not going to impact the hurricane season at all way up there near Greenland. So it was mostly just in anywhere where tropical cyclones can develop, it was well above average sea surface temperatures. And that has a huge role to play with uh, what kind of hurricane season we saw last year. And, and quite frankly... It, this means a lot, but I think that if this was the case and we had an El Nino, it would not have been a, her, a historic hurricane season. We had a La Nina uh, combined with this, and that is what created the perfect hurricane season. If we had an El Nino, it would not have been the case, and that's how strong of a role that La Nina, El Nino plays on the hurricane season. Now, for 2021, you can see we've cooled down significantly since last year, uh, very significantly. But still, overall, I would say 70% plus of this Atlantic Ocean, this tropical Atlantic, is above average. It's just not as far above average as it was last year. Um, so really, I, I think we can expect an above average hurricane season because I do think we will stay on the La Nina side of things. Uh, and these sea surface temperatures are quite warm. So Overall, I think we can expect an above average hurricane season, but it's not going to rival last hurricane season. Everything was perfect last season, and it's going to be hard to compete with that unless we, we end up going very strongly in the direction of a La Nina, and we see significant warming across the entire Atlantic, in which case we could potentially, obviously, if that was the case, see a, a much worse hurricane season than I'm expecting. Here was our sea surface temperature forecast. I expect the Gulf and the East Coast there to be warmer than normal. The Caribbean looks to be more near, near normal. Uh, some slight oranges, some blues, uh, but really near normal. And that main development region, I do expect warming, like I said, based on model guidance. 
Uh, so I expect above average sea surface temperatures there. I will be updating this a couple of times before we reach, you know, the heart of hurricane season. I know the hurricane season officially starts very, very early, uh, but I'm going to continue to bring outlooks well beyond that date because obviously we don't see things really get going until, you know, sometimes June, sometimes July, sometimes August, most times just August, uh, unless it's like last year. So really, um, I'm going to be updating this regardless of if the hurricane season has started or not. For wind shear, it's equal chances because this is going to depend on the El Nino or the La Nina, uh, and that's going to play a massive role in this hurricane season as well. If you would like to see my full hurricane season outlook that I uploaded, again, about a week ago, I'm going to put a tab right there on the top right corner that you can click right now, uh, and that'll take you there, uh, and you can check that out because we're going to go way more into detail in that video of what my thoughts are, so if you enjoy hurricane-related content, or you're just concerned about the hurricane season in general, you can check that out today. Our confidence tab is the same as it was in that video, a 4 out of 6. We're obviously a little bit above 50-50 chance uh, confident here. We have some clear-cut indications that things could be certain ways, but the El Nino, La Nina be, remains kind of a question mark there for us. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think this upcoming Arctic blast is going to end? And Cloudwatcher said, I think... We say goodbye to the poor little Arctic blast on April 24th. Somebody is clearly upset about the cold air. Uh, I'm ready for the warmth too, so I understand where you're coming from. Good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Palomo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, City Klein, Mark J., Luke Flego, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, for our channel members highlight of the day, I would like to thank all of you for supporting the channel, but especially our weather top dog, Hair Farms One, and then also our super fan, Phoenix Nimitz. If you'd like to join this, you can do so by clicking that button next to the subscribe button and joining today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content, and I will see you guys in the next video.